Today, we're talking about how 12 Factor App scales its processing by using concurrent processes. This is particularly useful when you need to handle web requests or background jobs in parallel, or when you have a large amount of data to process. Now, if you've never dealt with threads or parallelization, it's awesome to see just how much faster you can get your processes to run. So let's dig into that. Hey everyone, and great to have you here, and happy Valentine's Day. And if you're lucky enough to be celebrating with somebody, I hope you're doing something awesome today. And if not, I hope you're doing something awesome as a free agent. And as I'm recording this well before Valentine's Day, you can only hope that I post this on the right day, but I digress. So this is our series on the 12 Factor app where we aim to make applications more scalable, reliable, and efficient to work with. Now, one of the ways we can make applications more efficient and scalable is by using concurrency. Now, concurrency is the ability to run multiple processes at the same time. So you can think of it as there are two ways to scale. You can either scale up by increasing the amount of resources that your server has to run its processes on, or you can scale horizontally, in which case you are essentially setting up many, many servers to run the same job in tandem and therefore separate the workloads amongst many, many nodes. Now, in certain scenarios, it's far better to scale horizontally than to scale up. Scaling up, you can run into limitations in terms of processing and resources that are available to you. Scaling horizontally, you can scale as much as you, you can afford. And what it allows us to do is to cater to a larger audience and to scale up our processing. So to give a few examples of concurrency and where we might use it in our applications, if you had, say, a database or a queue, you could have a process that goes off and it grabs an item from that database or queue, does some processing with it, and then sends it elsewhere or returns it to the database. So if we were to have one process doing all of that work, it could only do it as fast as it could get through the items. Whereas if we scale horizontally, we can get lots of processes working in tandem. Another example might be if you were doing log file processing or some form of text processing, you could have lots of workers handling lots of files or lots of lines in files. But the most obvious example is a web server. So we have lots and lots of users who want to access our website at the same time, but we're not going to make them wait until the previous person has accessed the site before serving that request. We want to serve all those requests in real time. And that's where concurrency comes in and enables us to scale horizontally, either via processes, threads, or, or actual servers, and serve all of those requests in tandem, which is absolutely awesome because then we can get infinitely faster in the way that we process our workloads. So how does it work? We have a few different ways of performing concurrent operations. The first is threads. So you may have a single process and you can divide that process into multiple threads that run at the same time. And similarly, we can do this with processes or we can use the async and await functions in JavaScript, or we can spin up entirely new workers or nodes or servers, which is where something like Kubernetes comes in and, and will handle that scaling for us. And we're going to Kubernetes in a bit more detail in our next video, but there are a few gotchas when it comes to concurrent processing and things to look out for. So the first thing is that work should be self-contained. So all the work in your process should be self-contained in that process. And if it needs to communicate with another process, it should do so via some form of database or via some form of port communication. The second thing is that you need to be careful with log files or output because we have all these processes running at the same time and there's no guarantee that any process will definitely complete before another. So you may end up with misordered items in your results. Now, one of the things you can do when it comes to logging is make sure that you're using a thread safe log output. When it comes to something like Kubernetes, we're gonna be picking up those logs using standard out and some form of log aggregator in order to collect all of our log output. And we'll handle those logs within the log aggregator itself. Now, this is the same methodology used by some of the biggest tech around such as Hadoop and some of the Google Cloud products such as BigQuery. There's a whole paper on something called MapReduce, which is the process of taking a portion of work, distributing it amongst many nodes, and getting them to work on that data in tandem before collecting the result at the end. And it's absolutely okay to have multiple stages in that process. BigQuery, for instance, will take your query and it will break down various sections of your query and run those via MapReduce on multiple stages until you get to an end result. Now, if you're working with queues, one of the things you should do is return your jobs to the queue if you have any errors in your processing or have a failed jobs queue where you're collecting all of those failed jobs. And this is where we want to make sure that our processes are disposable, but that's the topic for the next video. So I hope that helps you scale out your processing and get through your workloads faster. In other news, Fernie is officially a GCP reseller now. And what that means is we can now offer invoice-based billing to our clients. It's another win in our GCP history, so direct message me on LinkedIn if you want more details. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Valentine's Day, whatever you're doing. And if you're not spending it with anyone, there's a load of videos on our YouTube channel you can go and watch if you like. But whatever you're doing, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next video.